Okay, so check this out. I'm going to show you how to calibrate your settings for in-game and for your mouse. Uh, basically, the whole point is to give you the, I guess I should say, like best advantage uh, against uh, any other players that maybe do not have their stuff calibrated. Um, the reason that you want to do this is because a lot of people who jump into games like this, they jump in, they play, and they don't mess with a lot of the settings. So if it feels squishy, um, they'll get used to it. Uh, if it feels you know laggy, they'll just get used to it. Um, this way, what you can do is you can adjust it to what feels best for you. That way you don't have to get used to bad settings. You get used to good settings. And that, in turn, um, honestly, will just make you make you better at the game. And even if you're not competitive, I mean, everyone wants to be better at, at what, they, what they're playing. So find a vertical line, just like this one here. Take your mouse, put it on your mouse pad, uh, or, you know, whatever flat surface you're using. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're using. Just make sure you mark the point that you're starting at. And then once you mark the point, just move it all the way to the right and stop at the line, so right here. Now, what we're finding is distance traveled. So for me, what I just did moved my mouse uh, to the right nine inches. That means that in game, I have a uh, 360 degree rotation in nine inches of travel distance for my mouse. And that is the setting that I have chosen um, to be kind of the perfect calibration for me, especially when I'm playing characters like Hanzo or, or like sniper, sniper type characters. Um, it may be different for you if you're playing something different, but I mean that's the, that's not the point. The point is is that whether it's you know three inches traveled or 23 inches traveled, whatever whatever is is comfortable for you, get used to the settings that you have created. Don't get used to the settings that are just native. So how you get that, like how you would adjust it is, let's say you did that, you did your 360 degree rotation and um, you basically did the 360 degree rotation in like four inches and it feels a little too sensitive so you want to adjust it. Well, you just go into your mouse settings and uh, you just adjust it accordingly. So, you know, for me, I'm using the Razer Mamba Tournament Edition, it's the corded, the corded version. Um, you can adjust it to whatever setting you want. Mine is adjusted to 1,450. Uh, you can keep on adjusting it until you find whatever you think is, is best. And definitely use this training area. This training area is great for testing out your calibrated settings. Um, so if you have changed your settings and you want to test it out, then, I mean, you just come in here and just do exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to go over some graphic settings. I just kind of want to take a minute to look at these two images here. Uh, the image on the left is going to be kind of your low settings. Image on the right is going to be kind of your like higher or like ultra settings. Um, now the image on the right, uh, honestly, the image on the right and on the left, they, they look about the same as far as overall quality. Um, quality difference in game. When you're actually playing in the game, you're not going to see any real quality difference whatsoever, even if there are some there. Uh, when you're playing the game, you're not really pixel peeping. You're not uh, looking so much at the detail. But there are some some differences between these images that you're going to immediately see, and that's the overall like clutter density in the map. Uh, you can see over here, the left side, the shelf has one propane tank. Then you go over to the high settings, and all of a sudden, there's a bunch of stuff on that shelf. Uh, same with this grass. You can see the grass kind of growing against this path right here, against the street. And on the lower settings, it's not there at all. Same with up here. Uh, along this uh, kind of this track or this bridge there's nothing there and on the higher settings it adds the grass that's not adding any additional real detail to this game it's really just adding I guess more realism to it and um, I choose to turn that stuff off and I'm actually going to go over why that is while I'm showing you uh, the graphical settings that I typically run at Here we have two videos running side by side. One of these videos is all low settings with no filters on um, and medium shadows. And the other one is going to be all high and some ultra settings um, with all the filters turned on. And I had to put them in slow mode just because at normal speed it was a little bit too quick and you probably couldn't see any differences whatsoever. But 
even in slow motion, it's very difficult to see the difference between your low and your high settings. So here are the settings that I've kind of locked in for my setup. Um, yours obviously is going to be, be different, uh, but this is kind of what I've got set up uh, to maintain what I need to maintain for my, uh, from my computer. There's going to be about four different things I'm going to go over in detail, but the rest of this stuff is not very important. Um, the very first thing that is very important is to enable your display performance stats. This is what is going to give you the readout on the top left. It gives you your frames per second as well as other things like your network status and also temperature. But you're going to want to see what your frames per second are in order to set up the game properly. The second thing that's very important is the uh, the V-Sync. That is important. It's important because you want to turn it off. Um, if you turn it on, what it's going to do is it's going to try and lock your frames per second at the refresh rate of your monitor, and that's going to add a lot of input lag. It's okay for some games, but not really for first-person shooters. So turn it off. Um, the second thing, I'm sorry, the third thing is going to be the shadow detail. You want to set shadow detail to medium. Even if you have to run everything else at low, um, because your system can't handle, you know, some of the specifications, stuff like that, uh, running shadow detail at medium can, can be very useful uh, simply because it does projection shadows um, instead of, like, blobs under the character. And how that's important is if someone is running around a corner, um, you can actually sometimes see the shadows before you see the character if it's projecting forward. Um, and because of that, you can lead a shot um, where you can better predict, you know, uh, where they're going to be so you can line up like a headshot. And it's, it's important to put that on medium. You don't get that quality if you set it to low. Um, any more than medium, and it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So I usually just run medium. And the fourth and... Uh, kind of final thing is going to be the model detail. Model detail, I have it set to low. The reason that I have this one set to low is because this is the setting that controls the clutter and debris that's located in maps. Uh, setting this to low just takes it away completely. Um, if you have it set any higher than low, if it's medium, it'll, it'll add all of that clutter to the map. And that clutter is the distractions that we've kind of been discussing uh, in the prior two uh, portions of this video. Uh, of course, you can set it to a higher setting and you can keep that in the game, but for me, I'd rather it not be there because I don't want that distraction to, to kind of be there while I'm in game. Um, that's really the four kind of key points. Uh, a couple other things that are important are the uh, ambient occlusion, local reflection, um, and then of course the uh, dynamic reflection up here all these are set off uh, the reason that they're set off is because they're all filters they can add effects in game that make it look a little better but turning them off can um, really help reduce input lag i notice that when i'm playing with them on it feels a little sluggish so i just keep them off can't really see that big of a difference so it's not a big deal for me the whole goal of setting this up the whole goal of getting in here and changing these settings to uh, best meet whatever um, you know setup that you have is you're you're going to want to try and uh, get your frames per second around the refresh rate of your monitor. So most panels are going to be 60 hertz. Um, that means that you're going to want to try and keep your frames per second around that 60 without going under. So if you jump into 70 and 80, that, that, that's okay, but you don't want to really get under the refresh rate. So you really don't want to drop below 60. Um, 120 and 144 hertz panels or refresh rate panels are popular. If you have a panel like that, then the settings are going to be different for you. You're going to want to maybe drop the settings a little bit more so you can edge out above your refresh rate, above the 120 or 144, without really dipping or dropping below your refresh rate and by doing that you're going to really smooth out the game so um, it's less likely that you're going to have dips it's less likely that you're going to have any type of uh, uh, noticeable input lag and as you can see here top left the uh, 165 um, is just kind of static sitting there I know it says 164 but basically it's 165 static and that's really what you're going to want to do so whatever your uh, 
refresh rate is, just try and and match that. And that's really the goal of what we're doing here. Okay, so now I'm going to briefly go over the specifications for my computer. Um, this is the computer that I obviously calibrated all my settings in with. Uh, your experience will vary um, as far as settings and calibration, but that the whole point of this video was to try to, and assist you with finding what is good for you with your setup. Um, so I have a uh, processor is the Intel i7-5930K at 4.5 gigahertz. Kingston RAM, it is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2,666 megahertz. My hard drive is a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe SSD, 512 gigabyte version. Graphics card is the GTX 980 Ti. It is 1500 core overclocked and memory is also overclocked by about 500 megahertz. Um, the mouse I'm using is the Razer Mamba Tournament Edition corded version, not the wireless version. The keyboard is the Razer Black Widow Chroma. Monitor is Acer Predator XB1. This is the newer model, uh, the one that um, is the IPS panel at 165 hertz. This is a 1440p panel. The uh, headset is Logitech G933 wireless, and the case I'm using, uh, as you can see here in the, uh, the picture I have posted above, is Thermaltake P5 Core. Uh, my system is water-cooled. Uh, I will be making a separate video about my system, kind of going over all the specifications for the water cooling, uh, what I'm using as far as, you know, blocks, fans, uh, radiators, reservoirs, etc., uh, but that will be in a separate video. So I do appreciate watching this one. If you have any additional questions about any of the things that I had said, any things I potentially have missed or maybe did not explain as well as I could have, uh, comment in the comment section below and I can actually answer those questions for you. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.